Happy Veterans Day weekend. Happy Veterans Day weekend to all. To all the veterans out there that have served and put their lives on the line for this country. I love y'all. Got nothing but love for all of y'all. I think I want to thank you. Thank say thank you for your service. We wouldn't exist without you. This this video, I decided not to do the old style K bars. But I decided to do my new style full tang combat and survival knives. Most of these I've purchased within the last year. Some of them are older, like the one that you see on the top. That's the oldest one in my collection. But anyway, let's get started. Hope everybody's having a great weekend this weekend. Sorry for not getting out there, putting, putting a video out there earlier. I had to go through a medical procedure on Veterans Day. So that's how I spent my Veterans Day. And I'm a U.S. Army veteran, by, by, by the way. And... It was not a very comfortable procedure. I had to be put under, sedated or whatever, and then I was groggy for about 24 hours. I thought I was going to be able to make a video that day afterwards because the procedure happened in the morning, but I was out of it. I got home and I fell asleep and I woke up the next day. So anyway, I've sort of been kind of moving kind of slow today. But I've been wanting to put out my Veterans Day video. I like to put out my Veterans Day video. And usually I do my old K-bars and things like that. But I decided to do new things this year with knives I actually carry and use. <laughs> or have carried and used. This one, for instance, has been carried. I used to carry it for a while, Wes, you know, um, fast draw shootings. But it was also a knife that was very famous during Vietnam era. And this is the W49 Western Bowie. It's the Bowie knife that is often copied. Lots of companies copy this Bowie knife and make their version of it. But it's been out, I think, since 1949. <clears throat> it was popular amongst the soldiers and during the Vietnam era that were fighting in the jungles. This is, this is a knife that they like to have in the jungles. It's very heavy, heavy duty. Beautiful knife. I've had it for a long time, since the, I think the 1980s. Late 80s, I think, is when I got this one. Either late 80s or early 90s, one of those two. I absolutely love it. It's got the dangler sheet. Go ahead and set it aside. Next up. Let me see where we want to go next. Next, Another big one, huh? Get the big ones out the way. How about my wild pig hunter? Another great knife. This one had a, a coating on it. I took the coating off of it. It's 1095 steel. High carbon steel. I'm not exactly sure what kind of steel that the, the Bowie is. I know it's a stainless steel, I think. I'm not exactly sure what kind of stainless steel it is. So I just, I didn't say what kind of steel it is, but I'm pretty sure it's stainless steel. The original ones from the 70s were made out of carbon steel. This has the Micarta handles. This is one of my favorite combat knives. If the blank was to hit the fan, this would be one of the knives I'd want to take with me. It's made by Topps USA. You can still see the USA slightly on there. And the Topps Wild Pig Hunter. I also like the Topps um, US Fighting Knife. I think that's what it's called, the US Fighting Knife or US Combat Knife. I like that one too. It's like their version of the K-Bar. Absolutely love it. 
This is a custom Kydex sheet. It's not the sheet that it comes with. Made by Just the Sheath Guy on e eBay, I think it was. Just the Sheath Maker or Sheath Guy or something like that. On eBay. The next big one. My Baker Combat Boy, BK9. This one, I've done videos of it, batoning through wood. This is a tough knife right here. This would definitely be in my survival pack. Because this is a good camp knife for camp duties. I wouldn't really think of this, I don't think of this as like a, a fighting knife. <clears throat> to me, it's more like a heavy camp knife. It's kind of heavy in the hand to be a fighting knife. It's another custom sheet made by Jess the Sheet Maker, also from eBay. Does awesome work. Kydex sheet. I had made for my BK9. What's the next biggest one? Probably getting down here to my Warcraft. This is a 3V Warcraft. The Becker is made out of, I don't know if I mentioned it or not, but it's made out of um, 1095 Crovan. Chromium vanadium steel. This is 3V. It's got the Saber flat ground blade. Tonto, American Tonto blade with the flat ground tip. G10 handle scales, 3V blade. Five millimeters thick. Excellent knife. This is another knife that I would love to have if the blank hit the fan. That's, that's, a, that's a thought that, that's behind most of these knives. It's like knives I would want Hit the blank, hit the fan. That's what I was. That's the way I was thinking when I purchased these knives. And see, what's the next next big biggest one over here? Huh? Maybe. I don't know. Let's go with the EK44. It's one of my favorites. John X. Forty model forty four. This is. General Patton's knife, World War II knife. Absolutely love this knife. It'd be another knife I'd want to take with me. I have so many knives that I, I couldn't go anywhere because I'd weigh too much. <laughs> <laughs> there are a lot of knives in my collection I think would be great for knives to have if, you, if the apocalypse ever happened or blank ever hit the fan or Anything crazy happen. That one's made out of 1095 Crow Van also. Next up, let me see what we're gonna do now. It's another one I batoned with. Done videos of batoning with it. My SE6, 1095 high carbon. Absolutely love this one. This one is one that's not hard to carry, too. It's not so heavy that it's hard to carry. This is one I would highly recommend. I love these contoured handles. It's very useful for all sorts of stuff. It'd be great for self-defense, too, or, or, you know, defense as a combat blade. And also could do your wood crafting duties. It'd be great as a skinning blade. Great for all sorts of stuff. It's like sort of one of those knives, sort of like a jack of all trades. I don't know if it's a master of any, but it is a jack of all trades. Great knife. And the sheath on this is awesome too. And this is a sheath that it comes with. It's not a custom sheet. Hmm, next up, what we got next? Okay, next of my uh, side carry knives. 
This is my buck knife. Buck combat knife. Need to wipe out the blade, get a little bit of oil on it. It's got a 5160 Tonto blade on it. Absolutely beautiful. Nice thick blade stock. Saber ground Tonto blade, 5160 steel, super tough. G10 handle scales that you can remove, full tank construction. All these are full tank knives, full exposed tanks. Absolutely love this knife. This is another knife I, I would really like to have with me too. I like the sheet too. The sheet comes apart. And you can take it off of take it off of the off of this setup if you want to. I like actually like this setup though. So I, I have no desire to, to change this sheet. Absolutely like it. Great sheet. I mean extra strap to hold down right here. It's a nice setup. It's a buck combat knife. All right, full tank construction, 5160. Okay, what we got left here? We got all my smaller knives now. We're down to my small knives. These, all these knives are set for me to carry like this. Carry it in front, in front of my, uh, in front of my person, along my belt, in a, in a horizontal configuration. Sort of like a scout carry only in the front of my body instead of behind my body. That's why I like to carry these size knives. I like to carry them in the front. So all these knives are set up to be carried like that. This has a homemade setup that I made as of a, a, of a, my old uh, belt that I used to use for stropping. I turned it into a set up for this knife. This is the cold steel setup right here. The cold steel pieces that you can get to do different kinds of carries. And this is a, um, I forget the name of these. Don't say the name of it. I forget, I forget the brand name of it. But it's also set up so you can carry it easily. Snaps. And you can lock it in position so it can't come loose and carry it in the front of your body like that. Same thing goes for this one. This one has the same setup as this one, as a, the cold steel setup. This is small Warcraft. All right, let's get into these knives. This one right here is the SE Model 4. SE4, and it has this is S, S35VN Model 4 with uh, 3D handles. G10 handles. I got this knife to be my um, to be my food prep knife, as in a camp, in a camp situation, and also be my knife that I can carry on me. I don't know if I'm out in the wilderness. I don't think I'm gonna be carrying, you know. There's no need to carry a, a, a folding knife, really. This would, this would take on the purpose of all the per things I would do with the folding knife, and plus I got the extra strength of it being a full tang knife. In California, when you're out in the wilderness and stuff, you don't have to worry about all the laws about fixed blade knives and stuff like that. You still don't want to carry um, double-edged daggers, though. But you can carry knives like this, you know, because if you're out in the country, you're, like a hunt, you're in a hunting-type situation or wilderness-type situation, you can carry all these knives. So when I go fishing, you know, fishing out in the wilderness or whatever, I like to carry something like this. That's the reason why all these knives are set up to actually be carried, because they do get carried when I go fishing and do th different things like this one. This one, I've had videos of this one doing some batoning with this one. These are, these baton really well. <laughs> for, for, for out of all the small knives I have, this one batons the best. And this is the Warcraft, the original version of the Warcraft. This has a 3V blade, it was made in Italy. Stone wash finish. I believe it's a five millimeter blade. 
fits perfectly into this. I like I like the cold steel sheets, the Securic sheets. They work for me, you know, because I understand how they work. You don't run your blade along the along the um, the sheath. You, you run your spine along the sheath when you put it in, take it in, and put it out of the sheath. And you don't dull your blade like that. They work perfectly fine like that. Now with the cold steel sheets, so I have had experiences where some are good and some aren't that great, you know, as far as the fitment is concerned. So you know, the fitment can be kind of hit and miss on them. This is another knife that I've used with batoning and stuff, done filming with batoning. 3V blade. This one has a 3V blade also. Saber ground. Saber ground blade. Saber ground flat ground blade. It's the AK-47. Field knife. Another great knife. <clears throat> now personally, I don't know why they didn't make these in black. You know, with black blades, that's what I'm saying. Because these are supposed to be soldiers' knives, in my opinion, you know, soldier knives need to be, you know, for sure, definitely un unreflective, you know, not being able to, to, to give a reflection off or anything like that. So they should be black blades. I still like this knife. G10 handle scales, 3V blade, super heavy duty, made in Italy. It's my AK. Absolutely love it. You can get these knives for like 127 bucks. You know, I mean, you can still pick them up fairly inexpensively. And this is a 3V blade. It's an excellent, super strong knife. I think for, you know, this is an exceptional value for what you're getting. For as, you know, when you think about the steel, when you look, compare it to like other knives that are the same size, but coming with the same type of steel. This one right here. Is my other EK model 50 John E John X um, model 50. It's a World War II version knife made by K Bar in USA. 1095 CV. Excellent little knife. I've used this one for fishing, and it still smells like sardines. <laughs> But these are those. We gotta bring out some of the classics too, huh? We gotta bring out some of the classics too. Oh yeah. My new leather neck Tonto. Seven inch blade, leather neck Tonto. Absolutely love it. Let's kick him out the sheets now, huh? Leather neck Tonto. Yes, Midway did return me another Another uh, Leatherneck, Lindsey Thompson, Bowie. But the bad news is, this one's going back to people. Why? Still got a loose handle. And also, this one didn't come with the signature on the box. There's no signature on the box. And it's a number 2,795. As opposed, I think it was 385 or something like that I had before with the signature on the box. So, I'm gonna send this one back. I wanna get the black one. I'm like, I'm gonna give up on trying to get one of these, the Lindsey Thompson one. But I love this knife though, people. So I, I want the black one. I sort of want the black one more than I want this one because I want a real combat finished blade. And so you can expect me to get the black version of this one. The totally blacked out one. They're, part, they're, they're blacked out with a black powder coat. That's what they said on the, the website. But we'll put this one out here for now. It will be getting replaced. It'll be getting replaced with a, with a black one. Next up. Oh yeah, another one of my favorites. I gotta bring it out. 
You know which one this is. My K bar. This is my favorite K bar right here. The one with the they call it the modified Tonto or the Japanese style Tonto. Absolutely love this one. I love the way it feels in my hand. Veterans Day. Veterans Day. Day to say thank you to all the veterans that have served. Here we go. Another one of my K-Bars. You know, I love my K-Bars. Even though these, you know, got the thicker blade tank and everything, I still love my K-Bars. Because as a fighting knife, they're just fine. But, you know, I wouldn't use them for bushcrafting, though. You know, they're not the greatest bushcrafting knives. That is true. USMC. This is my pops. USMC. Got to bring out the memories of my pops. After all, he's the one that fought in World War II. All right. Let's see how many we can fit on the table here, huh? And oh yeah, the other hidden tang one. One of my favorites, my Carbon V USA made, Cold Steel Recon. Okay, let me see where we're gonna fit that one. <clears throat> All right, let's bring out some of these back out. The EK Model 44. Let me see what else should be next. The Buck Combat Knife. Cold Steel Warcraft. SC6. Tops Wild Pick, honey. BK9. And the old school one, the W49. From Western Cutlery. Let me see how we gotta do this. There we go. Wow. <laughs> Let's see if we can do it like this. I'll probably bring this one over here. Well, there you go, people. These are my combat blades. These are my combat blades. This one's going to be replaced with the black version of this one. I'm going to get the black version of this one. I absolutely love... Absolutely love this knife. I sort of wish I would have kept the first one, even though it had the loose guard, because the knife is absolutely beautiful. So if you get one of these and it has a loose guard, don't freak out about it. I think it might be, you know, kind of common to this knife. Maybe they didn't have the perfect fitment for the guards. So, but I absolutely love this knife. This knife is awesome. You get one in your hand, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. My other favorite big one, BK9. Now, this is a work knife here. This one's meant for work. This one's meant for splitting logs and splitting wood, setting up camp. This, this is a real work knife here. 
This is the workhorse out of this whole bunch of knives. I would call I would say this is the biggest workhorse. Absolutely love it. But before there was the BK9, back in the 70s, this is what they used to use instead. This was the workhorse back in the day. But I must admit, for splitting logs and doing wood woodwork, this would be better because you don't have the big giant guard. I think this guard would get in the way if you're doing like a lot of batoning and things like that. It's a great thing to have if you're if you're using it as a fighting knife, because that's the whole purpose of it, is to block somebody else's blade from hitting your hand, you know, if the blades if the blades hit. But it's a beautiful knife. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful knife. Very rare. All right, people. I just want to say happy Veterans Day to everybody out there. I want to give my thanks out there for all the soldiers that put their lives in harm's way, you know, so we can live the lives that we live, enjoy the life that we have. Here's my girl Juno. She's joining us. Mm -hmm. Don't jump on, up on this table, though, sweetie. There's too many sharp blades, though, okay? Don't jump up on the table, kitty. Kiddo. That's my girl. All right, people. No well, peace out. I hope everybody's doing good out there. Peace. Happy Veterans Day. Have, have, a, have a great Veterans Day weekend. Peace.